Hi hello welcome to learn stroke ias classes by arjun you're listening to the daily hindu news analysis for current affairs news leads with arjun r shankar today uh, we are discussing two days current affairs that is uh, 24th december 2022 today and also yesterday 23 12 2022 so two days are actually clubbed together because uh, i could not record the video uh, the current affairs analysis yesterday so i'm doing it combinedly today so uh, let's have a discussion in this session and uh, please do check out the editorial summaries for ias in the youtube channel moving on to the first news leads is uttarakhand's conversion law gets governor's not gs paper 2 law because the uttarakhand governor has given his not to the state's freedom of religion amendment act so recently we have been hearing a lot of laws regarding the conversion especially religious conversion and we have seen the same thing in gujarat and uh, where everything has actually been discussed about religious conversion which are basically forceful religious conversion so the state will now issue a formal notification on the amended bill which forced conversion will come under the category of a crime now onwards the forced conversion will come under the category of crime so as per the amended bill the conversion by force greed or fraud will be a crime in the states and can be a face a uh, imprisonment for 10 you can just see that it will now be uh, the conversion by force greed or fraud will be a crime in the state and you can see that <clears throat> around 50000 from 50000 rupees to it can even go up to 5 lakh to the victim and the uh, the law was enacted in uttarakhand in 2018 so they have brought out the the amendment is actually saying that uh, they can actually get an imprisonment up to 10 years so please do know about the uttarakhand's conversion law any conversion by force greed or uh, force greed uh, or by willful means can be treated as a crime in uttarakhand so know about the religious conversion <clears throat> moving on to the next is free ration to the poor for one year gs paper to welfare this brings us to an important area of questions like what is antyodaya anna yojana what is national food security act the nfsa and what is pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana because it basically the article talks about the three important questions that we need to know so in a major decision narendra modi government decided to provide a free ration to almost 81.35 crore poor people under the national food security act for one year so you should know that uh, under the national food security act also it's it is called as the food law it is also called as the food law the government currently provides 5 kilo of food grains per person per month at just 2 to 3 rupees per kilo so 5 kilo of food grains to a person at 2 to 3 rupees so the families who are covered under the antyodaya anna yojana uh, basically gets 35 kilo of food grains per month so rice is given to the poor person at uh, under the nfsa at 3 per kilo and wheat at 2 kilo so the center bears the entire burden of providing free food grains under the national food security act and the annual cost to the government is actually around 2 lakh crore so the government uh, decided not to extend the free ration under the pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana so uh, which uh, it, it has it has not decided to extend the ration to the pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana because under the uh, pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana 5 kilo of food grains per person per month are provided to around 85 close to 81.35 crores beneficiaries under nfc so this is over and above the monthly distribution of highly subsidized food grains <clears throat> so know about the free ration that the government is bringing in two important three important aspects to be known by here next is something very path breaking here comes the most important one regarding this as the uh, before that there is another important article that i had missed out the aviation regulator proposes the aviation regulator proposes full refund we need to know whether this news has come no i've just missed out that news so before this bharat biotech new there is a aviation regulator proposes full refund free travel for downgrading seating so domestic and international airlines could not 
could soon be required to refund the full ticket value and provide free travel for any passenger whom they downgrade from business or premium economy to economy class so in in case of a switching because most often air india downgrades passengers to a lower class than one they are booked because of issues such as unserviceable seats so normally when you book a premium business class or a premium economy or a business class what happens is airlines like there have been complaints in air india that you can actually your ticket uh, you will actually not get the seat that you booked because uh, there is something called as the downgrading system at serviceable unserviceable seats so in view of the rapid expansion of air services within india and on an international route and it has been noticed that sometimes airlines downgrade passenger tickets so it has been said that uh, international domestic airlines should actually be refund the full ticket value and provide free travel for any passenger who you know they downgrade from business or other economy premium economy to economy class so uh, uh, that is very important uh, it's a very important law in the uk according to the civil aviation authority a passenger is only entitled to reimbursement of a percentage of the ticket price of the flight which has been downgraded say you have booked a business class uh, ticket and uh, you are only been given a normal economy ticket so the people who are uh, you know protesting says that rather than giving the full refund in uk what happens is you have been downgraded from business to the economy class so that means there is a minimum amount for the economy class you will have to pay that economy class and that percentage of business to economy what has been you know uh, downgraded that percentage will be given in the uk so this is something that the uh, indian aviation sector is discussing gs paper 3 aviation and let's move on to the bharat biotech's path breaking thing the nasal vaccine to be available as booster dose so you should know that the intra nasal vaccine branded as the incovac is now available for public use and is a world's first intra nasal vaccine so the nasal vaccine the bbv154 had received the approval and uh, you should know what do you mean by the uh, let's take a look at this what is in covac and with the threat of covid-19 resurfacing and in india ramping up nasal drops it will be a good benefit for the public says the article so you can see that the nasal you can see the nasal vaccine is approved both as primary dose and also as a heterogeneous booster so it can also be used as a booster and a primary dose it was previously approved as a primary dose after phase 3 trials and separately tested for even as a booster so it also talks about the various aspects like uh, you can see uh, over 220 crore vaccines have been administered over to 12 years and above in india and though 90% of the population has got two doses only 27% have taken a third dose so uh, you can see that the nasal vaccine is approved both as a primary dose and as a booster so you can use this so gs paper 2 health know about this uh, incovac nasal route next is lok sabha winter session cut short after floor leaders consensus so recently every time as like every uh, assembly assembly happens normally there are disputes between the ruling party and the opposition party on various issues and this time the biggest a uh, flare of issue was the line of actual control and the issue in china the china the china india border so uh, mr om birla said that the the productivity of the house was 97% during the 13 sittings and seven bills were passed including the supplementary demands for grants you know that for foods <coughs> sorry and also the maritime anti piracy bill so uh, 97% uh, the winter session was productive says uh, ombirla and it also talks about something called as sindine or lok sabha was adjourned sindai sindai means indefinitely it is actually sindai means indefinitely so do know about gs paper to polity cabinet approves uh, pending orop what do you mean by one rank one pension scheme gs paper 3 defense because the union cabinet approved a pension revision for retirees they've all already got a re- pension revision has been given for a retiree from the armed forces and their families under the one rank one pension scheme which has been delayed since 
So the arrears will be paid from July 1, 2019 to June 30, 2022. So three years arrears is being going to get approximately 23,600 crores, you know, will be actually earmarked for this. So more than 25.13 lakh people, including over 4 lakh new beneficiaries, armed forces, pensioners and family pensioners will benefit from this. Three years arrears will be cleared. And you need to know, what do you mean by one rank, one pension scheme? So one rank, one pension implies that the payment of the same pension to armed force personnel for the same rank and the same length of service irrespective of the date of retirement. So one rank, one pension. So imagine that you, you are an officer. Say uh, you got retired in uh, 19, uh, say 85, nine, say 1980 and uh, you got retired in say uh, 1995. So the same, it, it, that means you, you've served in the army for 15 years. So what happens is uh, when you take about the pension, when you calculate the pension from the last drawn salary, obviously 1995, uh, the different uh, time period and the different service, there are a different, lot of differences in the pay scale. So same, similar officer who has actually started working in 1990, say you have started working in 1990 and you retire in say 2005. So obviously uh, you, the same r person with the same rank uh, who has worked for 15 years of service in different periods, uh, basically get different type of pension. So this is one rank, one pension implies that the payment of the same pension to armed force personnel for the same rank and the same length of service, irrespective of the date of retirement. Whether you retired in 1995 or you retired in 2005, for the same rank, same thing, you get the same pension. But what happens is, the person I told you who, who started working in 1980 and retires in 1995, say imagine, imagine, just imagine, who gets retired in 1995, uh, imagine that he's a brigadier and uh, he's getting a pension but that even a even a colonel who retired in 2005 will almost get the same or even more pension than the uh, brigadier because the recent pay scale is different so that one one rank one pension it is irrespective of the date of retirement it is for the same length for the same rank so you should know what do you mean by one rank one pension scheme very important Russia India can help in reviving intra Afghan dialogue. GS paper 2. Russia and India can play a very pivotal role in reviving the intra Afghan dialogue if the Taliban requests such assistance. You know that Russia is ready to provide necessary assistance in this regard. And uh, all of us fear that there is a possibility of the spread of terrorism from Afghanistan to the neighboring countries. So the article definitely talks about Taliban representatives have already begun to participate in international meetings. And you should also know that uh, in India is probably one country which is which hasn't officially recognized the Taliban. And uh, the Taliban uh, people have already participated in the uh, international meetings representing like the third meeting of the Moscow format consultation, the MFC, Moscow format consultation and the Tungsi, the Tungsi initiative, the neighboring countries of Afghanistan. Tashkent International Conference. So, the Tungsi Initiative of the neighboring country, the Tungsi is actually a province in China. The Tungsi Initiative of the neighboring countries, and you can see uh, a lot of countries are participating, which are bordering the neighboring countries of Afghanistan. So, know about GS Paper 2 International Relations, the Tungsi Initiative, the Moscow Format Consultation, and the Tashkent International Conference. Know about from Afghanistan perspective. So, the Tungsi Summit, what is Tungsi Summit of the neighboring countries of Afghanistan? is supporting economic reconstruction with Afghanistan. You can see that the countries like China, Iran, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan were participating in the Tangsi, the Tangsi initiative. It is re related to Afghanistan, the Tangsi summit. So these are some countries which are participating in the Tangsi summit. Moving on to the next important is the, the controller and auditor general of India pulls up DRDO for delay in the completion of projects and failure to achieve key parameters. So, you know that the CAG report, CAG is basically auditing and analyzing various parameters and the CAG says that the, the most important being the MM project. What do you mean by an MM project? So, the, the MM, the mission mode projects or DRDO, the controller general of has flagged time and cost and has uh, 
overrun in completion of projects and irregular closure of projects so the drdo has been criticized by the uh, the mnm basically means mission mode and it has been criticized by the cag and uh, over, they say that overall the delays range from 16% to 500% an extension of time for completing strategic projects was taken multiple times you there has been a continuous delay in that and the mission mode projects what are mnm projects the mnm projects the mm projects are taken up by a drdo as high priority projects based on specific user requirement and the report says that the m projects have high outcome certainty due to ready availability and what has happened is uh, the time overrunning irregular closure so lot of problems have created and many of the achieve objectives parameters of the projects have not been achieved so uh, they are, the mnm projects are taken up by the drdo as high priority despite the fact that they have a high outcome certainty due to rapid underlying technology there were considerable delays in initiation and sanction of the products by drdo so they have been criticizing the complete audit of the drdo and the missions moving on to the next is up and tamil nadu struggle with encroachment on centrally protected monument sites so this brings us a lot of gs paper 1 and 2 history and law because the article basically talks about the archaeological survey of india what do you mean by asi and what is the ancient monuments and archaeological sites and remains amendment act 2010 because the article say that there has there has been lot of uh, uh, protected monuments which have been encroached so encroach me you encroach that monuments and you can see that uttar pradesh has the largest number of centrally protected monuments and that have been encroached and followed by tamil nadu so you can see that uh, uh, while 75 uh, protected monuments have been encroached in uh, uttar pradesh and uh, in tamil nadu almost 74 monuments are uh, encroached so uttar pradesh has the largest number of central you know centrally protected monuments which are at more than 743 monuments of up are protected while tamil nadu has more than 412 monuments it is followed by karnataka and maharashtra which are third and fourth in encroachment and Guj followed by gujarat which has uh, so majority of the states you can see that the protected centrally protected monuments are been encroached so the archaeological survey of india has a big role to actually do in this regard and the asi as you know india has a total of 306 3695 centrally protected monuments so you should know that the archaeological survey of india regulates construction around the protect around the protected monuments through the ancient monuments and archaeological sites uh, amendment act 2010 so the act prohibits construction within 100 meters of a protected monument so the next 300 meter radius is also regulated so the amendment act in this uh, ancient monuments and archaeological site is actually planning to do away with the ban on construction within 100 meters of a monument and uh, even 300 meter radius is regulated so archaeological survey of india has a long way to do this so know about the ancient monuments archaeological sites remains act moving on center addresses managerial pipeline for good governance so this is a very good question for gs paper 2 good governance and also for the people who are writing public administration as their optional it talks about governance etc so i'm giving a mains question here gs paper 2 adoption of e office will be a great move in mooting good governance comment so adoption of e offices will be of great move it will be a great move in mooting good governance in india so you should know that in a major transformation in bureaucracy uh, around 60% officers of joint secretary rank at center report directly to the secretaries in respective ministries and departments as government is planning to delayer delegate and digitize governance so what do you mean by this can also be a mains question what do you the, the government is planning to delayer delegate and digitize so these are important words for governance so you should know that the uh, the additional secretary posts are likely to become redundant with the change as efforts are underway to reduce the channel of submission of files to less than 4 so you know that there are multiple 
vacancies like joint secretaries and uh, you can say that the uh, there are around uh, joint secretaries in 20 72 ministries are directly reporting to the secretaries 21 ministers have partly implemented the system while ministries is yet to implement this so you can see that there are around 65 secretaries 219 additional secretaries 452 joint secretaries post at the center so basically they want to reduce the additional secretary posts are going to become redundant with the change as they want to reduce the channel of submission files to less than four so that is why government is planning delayer delegate digitize so uh, the uh, it is also moving for an idea of e office the adoption of e office uh, will happen by february 2023 and uh, that will be a good move and a uh, lot of uh, e offices means definitely the the idea is to digitize in governance so please do know about what is d layer delegate and digitize in governance moving on to the next important article is all is well for moa makers this winter gs paper 1 history and gs paper 3 food so this article also talks about gi tag so what do you what do you mean by gi tag in the previous videos we have considerably discussed about the geographical indication tag and this time what do you mean by the joynagar moa what do you mean by the moa and the winter is going to be very special for joynagar moa the very popular bangal sweet meat available only during the colder months of the year with the number of registered manufacturer witnessing a massive rise and you should know that the uh, the joynagar is actually a settlement on the outskirts of kolkata that has got the geographical indication tag called the joynagar moa in 2015 so uh, the recognition on the gi tag was received in 12 2012 and the tag uh, was valid from 2012 to 2022 so now an extension has come for another 10 years that is 2032 so what is this moa the moa is a popped rice ball you can see it's uh, the moa is back is as old as 1904 is actually made of aromatic khoi which is popped rice mixed with jaggery sugar cashew nuts and raisins so the biggest problem is its short shelf life lasting not more than 5 days without refrigeration so uh, no more about the um, uh, joynagar moa the reason problem of this is the uh, shipping problem which is basically due to the high perishability so no about this moa or the joynagar moa moving on to the next is india and china to keep dialogue channels open so you know the line of actual control is actually in discussion gs paper 3 defense so the recently the 17th round of cops commander level talks happened at the at the chushul moldo border the meeting point on the chinese side so both of them is try, both of them are trying to solve the problems seriously so india and china to keep an open dialogue moving on next is cervical cancer jabs for girls aged 9 to 14 so this is a big concern from gs paper 2 health so they which is talking about the hpv vaccine or human papilloma virus vaccine and it also talks about the cervical cancer in women i will give you a main question here what is the national technical advisory group for immunization or the ntagi what is the national technical advisory group for immunization or ntagi how is it handling the human papilloma virus hpc hpv vaccine in the universal immunization program discuss so what do you mean by the national the ntagi and how is it handling the hpv vaccine for the universal immunization program discuss in detail and this article definitely talks about what is the national technical advisory group for immunization or ntagi what is the human papilloma virus vaccine because the government will roll out vaccination against cervical cancer for girls between 9 and 14 through schools so it has received the drugs controller general of india's approval and a one time catch up vaccine will be provided for girls the vaccination will be provided primarily through schools because of the high enrollment of girls and you should know that the cervical cancer india cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer in women globally in india cervical cancer is the second most common cancer in india india accounted for nearly more than one in every four deaths globally to cervical cancer so cervical cancer is basically preventable and curable disease as long as it is detected early and managed effect effectively 
So most cervical cancers are associated with HPV or the human papilloma virus and the HPV vaccine can prevent most cases of cervical cancer if it is given before girls or women are exposed to the virus. So know about this uh, HPV virus and what do you mean by NTAGI? That is something that we have discussed. So in 2011, the World Health Organization recommended that the NTAGI or uh, National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization should be there in every member country. So it's basically the NTAGI is an advisory committee consisting of multidisciplinary group of experts who are basically responsible for providing information to national governments that is used to make evidence-based decisions regarding vaccine and immunization policy. And what do you mean by HPV or human papilloma vaccine? We have already discussed about the virus in the classes two, three days back. So it's a common virus that affects different parts of your body. There are over 100 types of human papilloma virus, including the strains that cause warts in your hands, feet, face. It can even affect your genitals, your vulva, vagina, cervix, penis, scrotum. So uh, do know about the HPV. Moving on to the GS Paper 2 International Relations. India abstains from UNSC vote on Myanmar calls for constructive diplomacy, says Ruchira Kamboj, UN, the permanent member to UN. And I'll give you, this is all regarding the U U Myanmar summit and I'll tell you the problem. One main question for GS Paper 2. India's positioning in the Myanmar crisis is quiet and constructive diplomacy. Elucidate. So this is a question. India's positioning in the Myanmar crisis is quiet and constructive diplomacy. Elucidate. So India along with Russia and China abstain from a UN Security Council resolution criticizing Myanmar's military regime and instead called for quiet, patient and constructive diplomacy. So this has been criticized by the other countries around the world because this is the same military regime uh, which is uh, over, which, which overthrew the U national unity government in February 21 and, dem and demanded to end the violence and the release of all political prisoners including the Aung San Suu Kyi. So India said that we need a quiet, patient and constructive diplomacy. So uh, UK created a, pro a pro resolution which was passed by 12 votes and uh, which also supported the ASEAN. And everybody believes that we have a very complex situation in Myanmar and uh, we need an emergency situation. And India's abstention is being criticized by human rights advocates. And it also talks that India is taking a very soft position on the military junta that has imprisoned most of the democratic leaders of the world. And uh, India being a democracy is actually keeping quiet. So GS Paper 2, International Relations. And moving on, concern over bar on higher education on Afghan women. GS Paper 2, International Relations. India has expressed its concern by the decree issued by the Taliban, which has banned university education for all women in Afghanistan. Because India has consistently supported the cause of women education in Afghanistan. So India is also a handful of major powers that have engaged with Taliban without granting a proper recognition to Taliban. And India's neighborhood is volatile and uncertain, says uh, IAF Indian Air Force Chief. So this also talks about India's Indian Air Force Chief has addressed that India's neighborhood continues to be remain volatile. And he even referred to the Indo-Pacific region and how Indo-Pacific region is going to be a balancing game for different countries of the world and where everybody was targeting China. So India also on the run can also have serious impact if not dealt seriously. So Indo-Pacific region and Indian Air Force need to evolve into an aerospace power. So taking into consideration the, Indo the India's neighborhood problem, India Air Force needs to develop into an aerospace power, which can actually, which has the capability to fight and win tomorrow's war, says the Indian Air Force chief. Moving on, Bill seeks to promote ease of doing business. GS Paper 2 Polity. This talks about what is the Gen Vishwas Amendment Bill 2022. Because the government introduced a bill in the Lok Sabha seeking to decriminalize minor offenses to promote ease of doing business. And that is the Gen Vishwas Amendment Provision Bill 2022. So, you know, what will the bill will rationalize various aspects of monetary penalties depending on the gravity of the offense and creating more uh, trust-based governance. 
so a lot of uh, decriminalization of minor offenses will be done to do what and uh, you know what the gen F- you you should know that the biggest problem of doing business is basically the fear of imprisonment for minor offenses so that is a big hurdle for business growth so the bill is actually cre- uh, planning to propose uh, to replace such provisions with monetary penalty so that businesses can function without fearing you know jail in incarceration and the bill will make india a very more attractive investment destination for foreign businesses it will save time energy and resources by enabling individuals to settle minor uh, encroachments with just uh, penalties or monetary aspects rather than going into the jail so that is the jan vishwas amendment provisions bill do know about this and the center rules out an increase in msp for cotton so this brings us gs paper 3 agriculture and the story in short is that the farmers especially the cotton cultivators are demanding an msp rise so this brings us another important question what do you mean by msp what is minimum support price and what is pink ball worm so most of the cotton farmers in india are talking about this called pink ball worm you can get such questions in the prelims recently the pink ball worm appeared in the news regarding which of the following cotton agri cotton industry jute etc if you get an answer definitely go for cotton so you should know that the government you know that obviously taking into consideration the government has fixed a price which is called as a minimum support price for different crops for the msp for the median staple cotton uh 2023 is actually 6080 rupees for a quintal and the majority of the farmers uh, said they got prices much higher than the msp for their produce they said it was inadequate given the rise in price of inputs such as seeds pesticides and fertilizers so the government msp for cotton is 6080 rupees so most often the farmers are saying that they the input cost is very high seeds pesticide fertilizer cost are very high and the absence of uh, the pink ball worm is a big menace which is actually you know uh, creating problems for uh, uh, cotton cultivation in india so farmers who do not have the risk of pink ball worm were able to get good produce this year so the income from cotton was basically not good in the last 3 uh, to 4 years and uh, most often the government uh, uh, msp is basically at 6080 and majority of the cotton farmers say that they are also always already getting a, a price at around 8500 for a quintal of cotton so due to the high input cost they are dem- many of the farmers are demanding that at least the msp for cotton should at least be 10000 rupees for a quintal so if you if the government can actually do that then it will benefit a lot of farmers so just 6500 per 6080 per quintal is very low taking into consideration the input price highs like seeds pesticides and fertilizers so know about this next is the armed forces get not for acquisitions valued at 84322 crore rupees this brings us another important question what is defense acquisition council because the defense acquisition council by the defense minister headed chaired by the defense minister has accorded what is called as an awon what do you mean by aon which is acceptance of necessity for more than 24 capital acquisition proposals for air force uh, navy and coast guard so an aon is the first step in the long winding procurement process and the uh, the aons will actually equip the indian army with a lot of equipments like futuristic infantry combat vehicles tanks mounted gun system etc so lot of defense preparedness is actually done so you need to know what do you mean by the defense acquisition council the defense acquisition council is the highest decision making body in the defense ministry for deciding on new policy and capital acquisitions for three services army navy air force and the indian coast guard so the ministry of defense is the chairman of the council it was formed after the group of minister recommendations on the reforming national security system in 2001 post kargil war so defense minister is the chairman of the council and this time aon is actually the first step of procurement process 84000 crores of uh, machineries arms equipments is actually given to the defense sectors so know about aon and the defense acquisition council need taxonomy definitions to avoid green washing 
so this brings us gs paper 3 economy as well as gs paper 3 environmental economy so there is something called environmental economy and i'm giving you a main question here there is a need for regulated entities to develop and implement comprehensive framework for understanding and assessing the potential impact of climate related financial risk on the economy so you need to have a comprehensive framework for what climate related financial risk on the economy so what is a climate related financial risk on the economy so this is an environmental economy question you need to know about this so the article basically talks about what is green financing and what do you mean by green washing because uh, the the rbi has actually asked um, uh, to talk about the green financing to avoid the risk of green washing what do you mean by green financing the green financing refers to lending to environmentally sustainable economic activities so lending to environmentally sustainable economic activities is what is called as green financing and uh, green wash green washing basically is the process of you know what is green washing is the process of conveying a false impression or a misleading information about how a company's products are environmentally sound just to say that you want to get a green finance which is a uh, you obviously if you want to get a green finance you need to have an environmentally sustainable economic activity so greenwashing uh, since you want to get a funding for green finance what you do is you greenwash what do you mean by greenwash you create a false impression or a misleading information that your company's products are environmentally sound so it uh, greenwashing basically uh, involves making an unsubstantiated claim to deceive cons consumers into believing that a company's products are environmental friendly or have a great positive environmental impact so that is the process of greenwashing and uh, the rbi has asked to create you know avoid greenwashing to create more uh, climate related financial risk in the economy has to be studied gs paper 3 economy and environment and next is uh, regarding the capital riot panel report says trump lit that fire so january house january 6 committee final report asserts that donald trump was criminally engaged in a multi part conspiracy to overturn the lawful results of the 2020 presidential election and failed to act stop his supporters from attacking the capital so the uh, the, the the chairman of the committee benny thompson said mr trump lit that fire so putting the democracy and life of thousands of americans in danger so this is the capital right report which has said that trump has lit that fire gs paper to international relations so these are some of the most important news leads of the day Sit back, learn all the articles and subscribe to the channel Learn Stroke IS Classes by Arjun and read all the important articles.